What is up, Math Superstars? In this edition of Mr. Peterson Presents, we are in part number two for our geometry section. We are talking about this big word right here called quadrilaterals. So in your notes, what we have is we have a column for your shape. We have a column for the name. And we have a column for the description. And so this will match your notes. So you can follow right along here and fill in the goodness that is quadrilaterals. So our first one, we're just figuring out what this word quadrilateral means is your first shape. In your description, what we have, this is a polygon that has four sides. So when we talk about polygons, this is any sided shape and any shape that has four sides to it, we call those quadrilaterals. So that's your first description. And for the second part, all the angles, when you add them all together, so angle, so if we labeled any one of these quadrilaterals here, so say if I focused on this one right here, the one that I circled, so if I have angle one, angle two, angle three, angle four, when I add all those together, they go, they're going to equal 360 degrees. So now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about some specific types of quadrilaterals. The first one we have is a trapezoid. So in our trapezoid, this is a quadrilateral because it has four sides and it has exactly one pair of parallel sides. So it's very important to get the specifics down in here. So please don't abbreviate and rush through your notes page, please. So what you have here in the quadrilateral, the one pair that's parallel sides, the top and the bottom, if we want to call this a trapezoid, these would be parallel. So another specific type of quadrilateral here is we have a kite. So our description is we could call this a quadrilateral. This quadri quadrilateral called a kite has two pairs of adjacent and congruent sides. So here's what this means. So this word adjacent, means next to each other and congruent means exactly the same and so when we take a look at this this kite here in our example we can say that these two sides are congruent they're next to each other so they're not opposite one another but they're next to each other so we're going to put a mark those slash marks here so we'll give that one slash mark a piece saying that these are adjacent and they're exactly the same or congruent. And then let's go ahead and do that for the bottom. We're going to add two slash marks on each one of those, saying that those two sides are adjacent and congruent. So we marked that down. We wrote that down. Very nice. And our last little bit for our description, this has one pair of opposites congruent angles. So when we talk about our angles, this is where we draw those little arcs in. So remember from the previous video when we talked about congruence, we used our slash marks and our arcs here. So the two, the two pairs, I'm sorry, the one pair of angles that's congruent. So we have the angle right up at the top and the angle right here at the bottom. These ones, when we draw the one arc in both of those, we are saying that these two angles are exactly the same. And no matter if we squish this, squish the kite or, or make it bigger, which we'll see how to do that here in a little while, these two angles are always going to be exactly the same. So now we have a different type of quadrilateral, very specific. This is called our parallelogram. What this is, yes, you have to write this. This is a quadrilateral. So we're given three very specific points for the description here. So let's talk about the opposite sides. So our opposite sides, these are congruent. So if we talk about opposite sides, we can say that the top and the bottom are going to be congruent. That means they're exactly the same. We can say that the left and the right side are congruent. Those are exactly the same. And so you can tell that in our parallelogram, so that the top and the bottom are the same, the left and the right are the same. So we got our opposite sides. 
We can also say that the opposite angles are congruent here. So we can say that if we start at the bottom left angle, we're going to put one arc there. If we talk about the opposite angle is going to be the top right angle. That's going to be exactly the same. And if we started at the bottom right, we're going to do two arcs down there. We can say the same is exactly the same as the top left angle. And last but not least, we have the opposite sides are parallel. So the word parallel means that these lines will never, ever, ever touch. They can go on past your YouTube screen all the way around the world and they will never touch. So we can say that the top, oops, let's use the black marker. So we, you can say that the top and the bottom, what I did was I drew these little arrows here. Let's say that these, the top and the bottom are parallel. And we can draw two arrows on the left and the right side. We're saying that those two lines are parallel. So we can say that, just to recap, this is a quadrilateral. The opposite sides are congruent, which we marked with the slashes. The opposite angles are congruent. We marked those with the little arcs. And that the opposite sides are par parallel. We marked that with those, with the little arrows. So now what we're going to cover is we're going to cover some specific types of parallelograms. Our first one is called a rhombus. So in our description, we say that this is a quadrilateral. This is a special type of parallelogram. And we highlighted it right here. This is a parallelogram because the opposite angles are congruent. The opposite sides are parallel, but all the sides are congruent. So if we're going to label our sides, all the sides are congruent. They're going to get the same slash mark. So we're going to put one slash mark all the way around. Let's go ahead and label our opposite angles are congruent, just like we did for the parallelogram. And we're going to label the sides being parallel the same way we did for the parallelogram with the, with the little arrows. So all we're doing, a rhombus is a very specific type of parallelogram because what makes it very unique is all the sides are congruent. So another special parallelogram we have is called a rectangle. So in our description, we can say that this is a quadrilateral. It's a special type of parallelogram. And this is what makes it special right here. We have each angle is equal to 90 degrees. So we can say that when we draw 90 degree angles, we draw little boxes in the corners. But what, what makes this a, a parallelogram also is that if we looked at the opposite angles, they're exactly the same. And so what we're going to do here, make sure I get the correct marker, is mark our opposite sides as congruent, just like we did on our parallelogram. And let's go to mark out our opposite sides are, that are parallel. So we're just adding all of our awesome math markings here to our lovely rectangle. And so we're making sure that we have all the descriptions listed. So we have our rectangle special parallelogram. So now we got our square. Our square is not only a special parallelogram, but it's also a special rhombus and rectangle because what it does is it has it takes all the special parts from the rhombus and the rectangle and we combine it all into a square. So we got the, so in our description, make sure you got all of those attributes listed. All the sides are congruent, just like we did for our rhombus. Each angle is 90 degrees, just like we did for our rectangle. Those putting little squares there. Sorry, my squares aren't good. And we're going to make sure we mark out. We got those two. Let's make sure we mark out the opposite sides are parallel. So now we're given this quadrilaterals chart here. And we're going to see, we're going to use some key words here. And so we're going to start right down here where we're at with square. So anytime we go up in the family tree, I can say that a square is 
always a rhombus. I can say a square is always a rectangle. And then I can also go, if I keep going up in the la up in the family tree here, I can say that a square through the rhombus is a parallelogram. And I can always say that a square is a quadrilateral. So anytime I go up in the tree, I'm saying always right here. So I can do that. I can say a rectangle is always a parallelogram. And I can say a rectangle is always a quadrilateral. I can also say the same thing about a kite. A kite is always a quadrilateral. And a trapezoid is always a quadrilateral. I can also use another keyword here. So another keyword is sometimes. So I could say I could say that a quadrilateral is sometimes a parallelogram. And anytime sorry, I got bowling in the background. But anytime I stay within the family tree, so the family tree of parallelograms, and I'm going down is gonna be sometimes. So I can say that a parallelogram is sometimes a rectangle. I can say that this parallelogram is sometimes going to be a square. So anytime I'm going down, I can say that the parallelogram is sometimes a rhombus. I can say that the quadrilateral is sometimes a kite. It's sometimes a trapezoid. And then my last keyword that we're going to use here is the keyword never. And so this keyword never only comes into play when we're jumping over in different families. And so I could say that a trapezoid is never a kite. A kite is never going to be in my little family tree right here. My family tree right here are the parallelograms. And so we're keeping in the family is sometimes or always, but if we jump families, it's gonna be never. And last little part here is we need to find out the missing angle here. So we can say that we know that from our quadrilaterals, the very first thing we figured out is that all the angles equal 360 degrees. So what you're going to do is you're going to add up the three angle measurements here. So if I do this in my handy dandy calculator, I'm going to write it out so that way you get the idea that we're going to be adding these together. And then I'm going to do plus X because we don't know what that angle is. So I can do 110 plus 92. I'm doing this in the calculator, by the way, plus 88 equals. So we have 290 plus X is equal to 300. Oops. It's equal to 360 degrees. So we do our one step equation here. So what we do is we can subtract 290 from both sides. So minus 360 in my calculator. We have X being equal to 70 degrees. So we can say that the missing angle is going to be equal to 70 degrees.